So in the last uh, video, we saw how we find our relative zeros. So now we're going to start looking at maxima and minima. So let me draw in a couple quick sketches here. So if I had a graph that was a cubic graph, um, we would have two places where we change directions. And when we change directions, that's where we have our maxima or our minima. They're relative because, well, yes, this place right here is a relative maxima, but we're going to get a lot larger over there. And this place down here is a minimum area just relative to our graph, but we're going to get a lot smaller when we follow it on negative. So we're relative to a certain area of our graph when we talk about our maxima and minimum. So our green point right here, that is our maxima, maxima relative. And our blue point right here, that's going to be our relative minima. And we could have a different graph. I could sketch another one in over here that's maybe a got four things to it. So in this case, we've got two relative maxima points. Okay, these would be our relative maxima. Because at a certain area, they are the maximum point the graph gets to. Not necessarily the maximum forever. In this case, our second one is our maximum for the whole graph. And then on the bottom one, here, right here at this point, we have a relative minimum. Again, we get a lot smaller going pot further in the right and further to the left. But right there in the middle of the graph, that is the minimum point. So it's a relative minima. So with that said, let's look at a more specific example. So we have this function here, and we want to graph it. And again, you'll notice that I start at negative 4 and I go to positive 4. Um, and I'm just going to plot some points and sketch this in. It is a cubic. So again, with our quick sketch, cubics do something along that lines. It is got a positive leading coefficient, so it is going to end on the right side going towards the positive direction. So let's plug these points in, and I'll start the way I did last time. So I've got some number cubed, minus 4 times some number squared, plus 5. And when I plug my numbers in, so I'm going to start with a negative 4 and a negative 4, and I plug that in my calculator. And so that's going to be negative 4 cubed, minus 4 times negative 4 squared, plus 5. And when I get all that in there, I get a negative 123. Then I'm going to take those negative 4s out. I'm going to try again with negative 2. So I plug negative 2 in there, negative 2 in here. So it's negative 2 cubed minus 4 times negative 2 squared plus 5. And I plug that in, and I calculate my value. And I end up with a negative 19. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the negative 1. So that's negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 5. And I end up with 0. And then I plug in my 0. And whenever I take 0 cubed minus 4 times 0 squared, I end up with just a 5 here. So I'm going to move across and put in my 1 and plug in that value. That's going to be a positive 1 I plug in. I end up with a 2. And I keep working down my points. So I put in a 2 here and find out what's going to happen. So that's 2 cubed. Minus 4 times 2 squared plus 5. And I get a negative 3. And then I plug in my 3. So that's 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 5. And I end up with a negative 4. 
And the last one I've got here is my positive 4. So that's positive 4 cubed minus 4 times 4 squared plus 5. And I get a 5. At that point, I'm ready to plot these points. Um, negative 4, negative 123, I'm not going to plot, obviously, because it's way too uh, far down on my graph. Uh, negative 2, negative 19, again, it's a little bit far down on my graph. But that just means that you know I'm coming from way far down. And then where I finally get to negative 1, I'm at 0. And we know that this went way down that way. Then at 0, I'm at but 5. At 1, I'm at 2. And then at 2, I'm down at negative 3. 3, I'm at negative 4. And then 4, I'm back up at 5. And you can see that we do get, in fact, the um, two curves, the two turns that we think we're going to get because this is a cubic function. And then we want to talk about our maximum and minimums. Um, we can kind of guess that our maximum is going to be um, somewhere around there, uh, not necessarily right on that point, but an approximate maxima is going to be the point 0, 5. And then our minimum, it's going to be somewhere down here. And so that is somewhere down around the 3, negative 4. Not that that really is our minimum, but it's going to be close to that. And that's kind of what we're doing. We are estimating, right? Estimating our maximum and minimums. And so those would be our estimates for our graph in this case.